Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We're going to watch this animation of the last week's worth of precipitation estimated from satellite. We're going to watch it twice. Ready? First time I want to watch it, I'd like to keep a close eye on Brazil. You will notice that throughout this past seven days, there have been some locally very heavy rainfall uh, in parts of central and northern Brazil here, and that has caused quite a bit of flooding or continuation of flooding that we've seen as of late. Now at the very end of this animation, we're going to watch it again, I do want you to note that early this morning there is a band of showers and thunderstorms that are going right here from Buenos Aires just to south of Cordoba that are spreading to the north. And we watch it again, you'll notice that over the last week, let's just go back here one more time, over the last week, uh, mainly the precipitation in South America was tucked away in the western side uh, of, of, the, uh, of the country here. And then toward the end it was actually quite dry until this little band came right through here at the very end. Now, since we've had a relatively drier week in Argentina, what I would like to do is I want to go back and look at our soybean production map and then start to look at some of the NDVI analysis here. So Cordoba, that would be this uh, region right in through here, which is about 26% of their total soybean crop. Uh, this year in 2020 into 2021, the latest NDVI data would suggest that we are um, you know, above what would be the, the normal uh, for this time period, which means the crop looks healthier from space right around Cordoba. It did not do that earlier in the season, but here it is late looking pretty good. From there over to Santa Fe, which is right in through this area, that's about 21% of the total production. A similar story, below average back in January, jumped way up here in February and March, and we're still sitting right about average on the NDVI values. Into this area, right in through here, which is only about 6% of the total production, the values are much lower. You can see that right in through here. And getting over to Buenos Aires, which is 30% of the total production, you again, we see that lately the NDVI values have been dropping off. And so to kind of show you a high resolution map of this, these are those areas. So Cordoba's here, Santa Fe, and the last two regions we talked about stretch right in through this area. Now, these big blotches, those are lakes, okay? But we do see the very bright colors here near Cordoba representing what could be a much healthier crop from space. But I want you to see that there's a few regions where we do grow beans right up in this area and also right in through here between you know the rivers that um, we see some, some lower values overall. So it, it's just calling into question here, you know, when I look at this from space, how good is this crop in Argentina? Now, again, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen some places in Mato Grosso, for example, that have gotten over a foot of rainfall, some places even more than that. But you get into southern Brazil, rainfall amounts are lighter compared to what they could be for this time of year. A lot of these regions over the last two weeks receiving well less than two inches of rainfall. And again, down here into uh, Argentina, we pick up on what looks to be more widespread precip, but it's a lot more scattered than what the map would suggest as you look down here. Remember, this is a satellite-derived product, not a radar-derived product. Now, over the last week, we look at temperatures, and under those drier conditions, we did see much above average temperatures moving in to this section of, uh, of Argentina. Other than that, though, we were cooler where we were wetter across the much of the rest of South America. Now throughout this week, it's something to pick up on here. Those same areas that I was concerned about with the lower NDVI values, we're seeing drier and hotter conditions. And here you can see the temperature anomalies in these areas. So let's go take a look at the next week's worth of precipitation. Uh, there's a pretty big hole right here in Paraguay, Rio Grande do Sul, parts of Uruguay. And then you notice that Argentina's eastern growing areas here showing up quite dry with the, most of the convection, the best rainfall, to the west over toward the Andes Mountains. Again, a lot of this is coming in as scattered uh, precipitation here. Potential exists in some of those scattered storms though to, to get up over an inch of rainfall, as you can tell. Now, this is where we've been watching things most carefully, the week two time frame. The latest European model reversed a trend at the end of last week and began to spread more above average rainfall farther here uh, to the east over toward Buenos Aires. It had always all along kept the wettest conditions over in the west and in the north, but we've now seen the model spread some of that out. Now what's interesting is that you would think given that the Antarctic Oscillation, which was honestly quite poorly forecast, bounced back up into above average values that we wouldn't see this. But I think that it's not the more dominant teleconnection and with the MJO going out of phase over into phase one, plus what we're seeing with the strength of the monsoon, 
uh, through through Brazil. I think this temp, or excuse me, this precipitation pattern is likely pretty robust. Let me get those drawings up there so again you can see it. We're wetter Mato Grosso do Sul, Mato Grosso, and as you get over here toward Bahia, you know this region. Drier in Rio Grande do Sul, and right here, uh, you know, basically in between the rivers uh, in Argentina into this area. But then wetter the more west you go, and what's lending some reliability and some skill to this is that this is the latest GFS run. Now I'll go back and forth, European GFS. And if I do this, you start to see a lot of similarities in this pattern. And when I see both of these global models picking up on a pattern, and I haven't shown you the GFS in a while because it's been, I feel like it's been off on its predictive skill here, uh, you start to see some consistency. So we're going to watch this most carefully going over the next week as we see what happens down here with the state of the crop in Argentina. But a continuation of some wetter weather where we're trying to continue harvest is a problem here in Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sol, that area. So I'm going to watch that carefully too. Long range data. So we know that the latest European monthlies were just released. This is the seasonal forecast. I am still concerned that the end of the Safrina crop may finish with drier than normal conditions in this area, despite how wet things have been as it's gone in. So I think that's going to be a key to watch as we move forward as well. Okay, appreciate your attention. We'll talk to you again uh, soon about South American weather. Thanks.